What's up, everybody? I'm Burton Newcomb. My boy Chad is my co-host. Welcome to the Living in Albany, Georgia podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the good food at Pearlie's and why reputation matters. Hope y'all enjoy. Your logo and uh, on yours too. Yeah. Well, no, yours is like behind you right now. I can oh, see it. Oh, my my office logo. I got you. Yeah, you know. So eager to represent. Just got <laughs> just got to represent. You know. I mean, we're just we're just trying to build a. You know, just trying to grow my business. So you know. Some people call you an egomaniac. Some people call me an egomaniac. We call it marketing. We call it because yeah. that's what it is, right? It's marketing. It's not us being egomaniacs. <laughs> my, my buddy, my buddy Dalton made the sign for me. He had like a little uh, business doing like woodwork and this shit. That is cool. So I was like, "Here's what I want done," and, and so he made the sign. Then I got my multiple years of being a million dollar listing over there, doing, doing a couple project. million in sales. No big deal. Then I got my licenses on the other side you know so, so. Well, you be know, I mean, up. for you 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 do a million dollars in sales for people as far as uh them listing with you by breakfast which is what you're shoving in your mouth right now from pearlies oh look at that segways <laughs> we're getting good at this man i'm telling you we're getting better every <clears throat> and then i make you jump and die better. the second we get the hang of it every better man we're getting better every day Oh, and that's the truth. So, what are you shoving in your mouth right now? We both I, went to Pulley's this morning. Yeah, I got a little biscuit, man. I had some bacon. Already, already scarfed it down on the on the ride home because I was pretty hungry. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, got got the uh, sausage biscuit. I got some bacon. Got a coffee. You know, I had to fuel up. So, I mean, that it's pretty good. I mean, I like it a lot. Pearlie's, you know, it's been here forever. It's a, it's a, it's a old it's a real old business mr pearlie's uh originally owned it i think and then uh somebody else owns it now i'm not really sure who it does have one of those hometown classic feels to it the first time we went to pearlie's rowan our three-year-old was like getting over the flu and hadn't thrown up in 24 hours and didn't have a fever anymore anything like that so we go we're like hey let's go out to breakfast Kid takes two bites of his pancakes. I don't feel good. All over the table. Loses it. Ooh. All over the table. Puts his hand over his mouth and it just fountains. So I had to take him to the bathroom and clean him up. We left a great tip for the waitress because it's like, I, I don't know what to do with this situation. <laughs> this is a first for me. Well, you know, I mean, that's what people get paid is to clean things up, I suppose. You know, right. It's like, here's I, I a feel bad. Yeah, I feel bad for the people who got to clean up behind some of these people. You know, like you know, me and my family. You know, we we have one child; she's twelve. You know, so we we keep things pretty clean, right? But I got a buddy who he's got five children, and I would say they're all under the age of twelve. I think probably twelve might twelve thirteen might be the oldest, and they got like newborns. So you can just imagine. That sounds the, like a horrific yes, existence. They make. That just sounds like a horrific existence from the start. Like yeah. any more than two kids to me just makes me go, oh my God, why? Like, why would you do that to yourself? You know what I mean? My wife and I did get the bacon, egg, and cheese omelets from Pearly's today. They were pretty good. They were pretty good. You know, I mean, I, for a bacon cheese omelet, they, they were all right. I mean, you were complaining about the prices, though. I mean, eggs are expensive, Chad. <laughs> I mean, apparently they're very expensive i think somebody fat fingered at my order and just maybe put one of the platters in and i didn't order a platter because when i do the math against that it comes out correctly so i think they just pushed the wrong button and then went whoops and i just paid it and left you know what i mean i, I you got to choose your battles in this world and when <laughs> when real estate adjacent yeah, it's battles to fight every once in a while. It's like I don't I don't feel like fighting over seven, eight bucks. Like that just at the end of the day, that's not a fight worth fighting. Man, let me tell you, dude, you know, that 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 brings us to like something else we need to discuss, man. You know, so let me tell you, man, when you are going into the into buying a home, 
it is so important to have someone who's reputable because man let me tell you dude i've got this deal i'm working on man and this lender is the shittiest damn lender i've <laughs> in my life the dude can't answer emails i've had to call his boss his boss doesn't answer emails I had to call his boss's boss his boss's boss didn't answer emails it took me calling his boss's boss boss to finally get a fucking response from it, from from the guy that's why i like people's because you have me my boss the president it's like that it's very concise so if i don't get a hold of you and you get a hold of my boss my boss gets a hold of me immediately and comes down me with the wrath of uh the old testament god not the new testament god who had a kid and is all cool now the old testament one that like plagues and leprosy and all that stuff we've had this house under contract since uh january 2nd we're supposed to close on the 10th, okay? Uh-huh. One, you want to know when they ordered the title and appraisal? Just take a guess. When would you Monday? have ordered the title and appraisal? When would I order the title and appraisal? Yeah. yeah. Like, I would try to get it done within that, the first day of getting it under contract and getting everything locked up. I would have everybody on board. Let's move towards closing. Let's get this appraisal done. Why are we waiting? I would rather sit there and wait on a date then sit there and wait on paperwork. Well, today is the 2nd of February, mm -hmm. literally 30 days later, pretty much. As of this morning, actually last night, if you want to call it that, that's when the appraisal and the title was ordered. <laughs> so the, the chances of us getting the close on the 10th are probably the slimmest to none. <laughs> Oh my gosh, unless they put a rush order on that appraisal and get it back and by even even by Friday, that's still a tight turn if they haven't done anything with Kyle yet. Oh, I mean, it's 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 gonna be a tough one. So, you know, basically, when you're buying a house, you better have a reputable lender, a reputable agent, and a reputable home inspector. You know, the problem I have with a home inspector, Chad, is these people they just give their damn opinions and they don't even know what they're talking about. Like there's no licensing board, oh, I you know, know. And, and so somebody with zero knowledge of construction could open up Joe Blow's home inspections, and people would take his opinions as if they matter when they're oh, just an opinion that that half the time isn't even right. Having bought two homes and sold a house, I've been on both sides of a home inspection. Um, <laughs> I may have swung a hammer a time or two in my life. So I know I know a thing or two about construction. And some of the things they pointed out when I was selling a house, I just rolled my eyes. I'm like, really? Really? The house the house that we sold is built in 2005. They're like, oh, hey, well, you know, there's, what was it? There was no cracks in the foundation, but stuck out in Arizona. There was one hairline crack by the door. They're like, oh, that could be structural. It's stuck out for fuck's sake. Like, are it you sure? It's a it's a crack piece of here. You know what I'll do? I'll take a little bit of caulk and I'll just I'll fill. I'll take some concrete caulk and because with 125 degree heat during the day and then it gets down to 50 at night. That expansion and contraction over the course of almost almost 20 years, 15 easy. You're gonna have small hairline cracks in places. That's just the way it is. These people ask for a repair. Because the home inspector said the the gutters are clogged. Guess what? The, the inspector didn't even look at the damn gutters because they got a screen over the damn gutter. So how could they be clogged, Chad? Well, and get a ladder. I'm sorry if you buy a house with gutters, you're going to have to clean the gutters. I mean, there, there comes a point in time where you have to realize that, hey, you're buying a house. You are in, you are voluntarily assuming some work i mean a house to keep it up and keep it looking nice and everything else takes and here's a dirty word effort it takes a little effort and oh boy oh boy when we bought our house there was a little bit of damage in the water damage in the garage and the home inspector made a big deal out of it and i looked at the pictures i'm like this hasn't been wet. I asked when they put a roof on. They're like, oh, I put a roof on like five years ago. I'm like, this hasn't been wet in five years. Like, it got wet, a little bit of the roof ceiling peeled, and they fixed the roof, and the leak stopped. 
How the hell did you do that? And he's I, like, I oh, mean, I don't know. oh, I don't know. It's like. Mm. Then, you know, another problem I have is these damn appraisers. You know, at least there is somebody who regulates the appraisers, right? But, you know, like how, how can an appraiser go into a new construction home that doesn't have a fence, doesn't have a pool, doesn't have this, doesn't have that, and appraise it for, let's say, half a million bucks, right? But mm -hmm. then you take a home that was built in 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006. You've added a pool. You've added a shop. You've added, you know, all, all new lighting, all this other custom features, and not none of that gets taken into account. All they look at on a new construction home is the price to build of that, and, that, and that's where the appraisal comes in. But, you know, when, when they're appraising these older homes, you know, they don't take into account the upgrades that you've added, which is just fucking bizarre to me. I'm not even going to talk about appraisers. My mom told me if I can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. So I'm just not even going to go down that road. I've had some good ones. Now, now I will be fair. I've had some appraisers that have gotten me appraisals back. We've ordered them. They were back in 48 hours, completely clean, looked great. Boom, boom, boom. So when I get that level of competence, it's hard for me to then turn around and deal with any incompetence because i know how fast it can be done because i've seen it done yeah and then i'm waiting on somebody else oh yeah we had some we had an appraiser once out of deal i was working on put value on a shed the entire front of the shed was off its foundation it held us up from closing for two weeks because they put value on it and then the person went in the hospital so we couldn't tear it down because they couldn't it was a mess and it's like, you should have just said this is an eyesore, tear it down, because the entire thing, well, you could touch it and put your finger through the sidewall. You could just push it and push your finger through the wood. And he put like a hundred bucks on it. <laughs> really, that's going to make that's going to make or break at a hundred dollars. A hundred bucks, really? Like, just shut your mouth. Let's move on. Just go tear it down. It's a hazard. Tear it down. Burn it down. Incompetence, man. Incompetence. Shouldn't have been no value ever given there. Absolutely nope. insane. Nope. Next time I see you, I'll show you pictures of that shed because I still got them. Because and you'll laugh. <laughs> you'll go, what the hell is this? I mean, yeah, you know, some people the they just don't know what they're talking about. Oh, did you see that the stock market flashed three bull indicators, which is gonna make the Fed real happy? They're trying. Inflate. I was just looking at inflation numbers. It inflation went up six percent from 2021 till the end of 2022. It's the biggest jump in two decades. And now the the stock market's going. Hey, we're gonna rally and do a bull run. That's gonna piss off old Jay Powell, and he's gonna hit us hard again and go. No, nope, no, nope, can't have that. <laughs> we can't have that. I saw it this morning, and I went, Oh, that's fun. That's good news. I hear you, man. What? what so, I, let's, I'm about to look at the stock market. I hadn't looked at it today. But I mean, you know, this, these damn people, they're going to destroy our damn economy with all these fucking rate changes. Just let, yeah. It, ma, I was always taught, as far as macroeconomics go, you can't control macroeconomics with microeconomics, right? That's a rule, as far as I know, in economics still. And yet, every economist, tries to control the macro level with these micro moves it just uh, I, again it's incompetence yeah absolute incompetence if, if we ran the world buddy she'd run smooth as glass this will be the smoothest running world and this will be the smoothest running thing in the whole world what can i say right i mean we got all the answers right here we that people just gotta people just gotta let us solve them right i mean that's all Put us in charge. I'm not saying that they should put you and I in charge for like a year, maybe three months, and we'll fix it all within three months, and then we should be kicked out. Because any longer than that, we'll start screwing it up just like everybody else. <laughs> Power goes to your head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> oh, put I can somebody fix in charge everybody. and take too much power. Oppenheimer had the greatest quote of all time. He said, you know, humanity can save the world if they just stop trying to do it. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's exactly right.
Yeah, over the over the last five days, man, we've had a huge, huge jump in the market yesterday, man. Huge. Jump. Yeah, and they're having a meet. The Fed's having a meeting in February. How do you think they're going to take that news? They're not, not going to be happy. They're not no. going to be happy. Old Jerome, he's going to give us the old stick of the ass again. And I can see why he's doing it. You know, we don't want the value of the dollar to be devalued while we're also still having some trade things with China and all the Ukrainian stuff. We want the dollar to be strong right now. And we can't <laughs> we can't have an 8% inflation rate again this year because then the yen will be gaining strength against us. We can't have that. So I get where he's coming from. And I guess he's got no other weapon to do it. You know what I mean? It's just... Did you see Apple and Google are laying off a bunch of people? So I Oh yeah, man. The tech businesses, I mean, those things are about to go down the shitter, I think. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the, the rest of the dot com bubble is finally deflated after twenty some years. I don't I mean this it'll be incredible to see what happens, you know. I mean, when when you know, I was talking to my buddy, so he bought a hundred and ninety nine thousand dollar house. I guess about a year and a half ago, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so his his mortgage on his house with, with taxes and insurance, all escrowed in and total, he pays just under 14 and some change, right? Yep. So like I mean it's like 13 and some change. So just under 1400 his whole mortgage. But now I mean, you know, like if he was to go and buy a hundred and ninety nine thousand dollar house today. I bet his mortgage would be north of 2000 We We threw our house. We threw a bunch of money at it because we sold our old one. But I think we wound up financing about $190. i am only paying $1,400 a month. But we got in right at tail end. You know what I mean? The door's closing. The door's closing. Kind of that shoot it through, you know, shoot it through the closing door, Indiana Jones style, and grab your hat on the way out. That's right. Time in the market, man. You got to know your timing in the market. You do. Uh, but at the same time, if you're sitting on the sideline and you're you're spending rent and you're going, oh, I, I'm waiting for the market to correct. Every 100%. day you give a landlord money falling behind because you're not paying yourself anything. You're paying somebody else everything. At least with a mortgage, you are paying yourself a little bit. You know what I mean? And it grows every time you make a payment. You're paying yourself more out of that payment every single payment. Better to pay seven, eight percent of interest than a hundred percent in rent. Right. But, unless you're one of my tenants, then you know, don't yeah. yeah, unless unless you rent from Burton M, <laughs> hey, keep rent. You're better off as a tenant. He's an amazing landlord. You're not gonna get anything better out there. <laughs> Or buy a house and recommend renting with him to your friends and just fill the lease for him as you leave. So he just got a round robin thing going on. Then you don't have to worry about it, buddy, right? That's right. I look at every single house I buy as a new 401k. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the uh, the average just to kind of put everything into? I always look at averages of payments. The average car payment in this country right now, do you know how much it is? No. Nah. Six hundred dollars. People will go out and finance a car for five years for six hundred dollars a month, and that thing loses value from the second you drive it off the lot. That's just the way it's been since day one. Ugh. But when they look at spending money on a mortgage, they go, "Oh, it's it's just too much. I can't do it." Do you realize? Really? Okay. All right. My, I mean, my front payment is about seven fifty. My, uh, mine's zero. Mine are both paid off. Yeah. You, you have the Range Rover. Yeah, my Range Rover's paid off. Our van's paid off. But it's because we bought a house, sat on it for a little while, waited for our money to come in, sold it, and we were able to do these things to get ahead. Leveraging equity is the best part of owning a house. It just that's, right. it, that's the American dream, right? If you want to build generational wealth like you and I both do, Real estate's the number one place to do it. You look at 90, I think something like 90% of the people who are like billionaires have, have, have all come from real estate. Insurance is another another good uh, game as well to play. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, you know, 
But I mean, so, I mean, some of these people, man, some of the, they got like these drop shipping businesses. They ain't nothing to you know scoff at. But I mean, I got like a little e-commerce store on the Facebook. I mean, it's a it's a pretty lucrative industry, drop shipping. I'm gonna be opening a t-shirt store on Etsy because I watched a couple of videos on how to kind of parlay those designs and really just have the people making the t-shirt ship them to people when they're done. And it's like, all right, I'll do that. I'll just throw some designs up. And then when you order it, somebody else ships it to you. Yeah, that makes sense. Passive income. Always good. No, no income better than passive income, especially, right. you know, if you can get, use it as a tax deferral method. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Everybody needs an LLC for a tax shelter, right? <laughs> oh, That's right. These these lemon cello blueberry bangs are if, oh if you like energy drinks these things are amazing i love the bangs man there's like there's like a green apple one man or like a candy apple or the something. candy apple yep. yeah dude that thing is delicious then they got the I, lemon and lime one oh i like the lemon lime one i can't drink anything that's like green apple or apple flavored because i immediately throw up don't know why don't, I tried, and it it has never stopped me from trying to drink to drink anything of that flavor, even apple pucker, like the apple, the sour apple schnapps. Oh. You better put some butter shots in it to make it caramel apple, then I can throw it down. But if it's just straight apple pucker, it's coming down, coming right back up with anything that was previously in there. I hear you, man. I, I'm a, I'm an apple guy. I'm yeah. apple. Hey, I, I got a question apple. for you, man. Yeah. You ever been to uh, St. Augustine? I've not. I want to. I haven't uh, been out there yet. You know, I mean, you're, you're no help for me then, Chad. No help. Barely any help for anybody to begin with. This is not news to me. <laughs> I hear you. I'm supposed to be going this weekend. Yeah, I got to figure out what we're going to do while we're there. I'm trying to come up with some ideas. I have some ideas for you if you're if you're going with your significant other, but we can't talk about them on the podcast because <laughs> we want to keep this thing slightly family friendly. I mean, uh, language here and there, but I mean, hey, listen. The other day, my we were driving. I was going to drop my kids off at daycare the other day, and we were out. What's that road that goes by Publix in Leesburg and then crosses uh, Lovers Lane? I can't remember the name of it, but we're coming on that road, and the person has a stop sign. And I'm turning left. Well, they just decided because I was turning left that they were just going to go. The damn near hit me. I slam on my brakes, and from the back seat, all I hear is my three year old go, God damn it. And I just started dying laughing. I'm like, I can't even yell at you, kid, because you read my mind. Like, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yep. Yep. Perfect way to use that race. <laughs> Pay attention. What the hell, man? These people, man, we have some of the worst drivers in the world here. I don't know how where they get their driver's licenses. It did, since COVID, since COVID, two years now, there has been no driver's ed. So think about how scary that is. We have 16-year-olds on the road that took a paper test. That's it. They just they, they filled in some bubbles. They may have never even been behind the steering wheel. And then DMV just goes, here's your driver's license. Here's your higher insurance premiums, everybody. <laughs> I understand you can't penalize them, but hey, put the driver's ed guy in the back seat, put them in the front seat. Everybody mask up because you need to drive to learn how to drive. Driving in Arizona was no better. Everybody, because everybody moves there, so nobody's from there. So you have driving styles from all over the country, and every state has its own driving styles. And Michigan's is, we drive 105 miles an hour. Like, get out of my way. If you're not speeding, you're in my way. That's just how it is there. In Arizona, they, there are some people who like to abide by the speed limits. I found Ohio really likes to abide by speed limits. When they see the speed limit, that's as high as their speedometer is going. That's it. I take uh, speed limits as a recommendation. Right. So like right. I'm a higher level driver, I think, than your average individual. So I think that my speed limit actually allows me to have a little bit of a higher speed than, than your average individual. But I'll tell you, man, we got these fucking speed cameras in this town. I was going to say we should talk about those. 
man, these speed cameras have got to end, man, because they, they I don't want to stress how many tickets. 80, 80 bucks a ticket, man, on they, Slappy Boulevard? Come yeah. on. And if it's at 829, when your clock says it's 832 in the morning, and they're going, oh, no, it's 829. In Arizona, they had those, right? And this dude put a gorilla mask on and drove to work every day past the speed trap and sped every day. And they kept trying to give him a ticket, and he just kept saying it wasn't him. Because they're giving the vehicle a ticket, not the person. And eventually, Arizona went, those are unconstitutional because we're punishing the vehicle, not the person. So the precedent has been set in other states to fight those. I'm just, A, I'm not smart enough. I guess, B, I'm not motivated enough to lead the charge. But the pay, the road has been paved with the laws out there to go, listen, these are unconstitutional. You still get them in certain, like Paradise Valley, Arizona. They still have them. But when you get one, you don't have to pay it. I guess you have to, but they can't do anything to you until you get 10 or more. Then they can come knock on your door and say, hey, you have to pay these tickets. And they have to prove beyond reasonable doubt that it was you driving in each instance. They have to have a clear picture of your face. We need Which makes sense. City to stop you know putting this bullshit out and do some real good actual achievements for our community i mean let me tell you man if i was running this place we had no problems obviously because me and you we know how to fix everything right but like golly i mean these fucking people running this city man they do the worst things in the world and we're both active in the community right i mean we go to public action committees and all these things and we hear what people are saying, and people keep saying the same thing. They're giving us speeding tickets in school zones, but they're not doing anything to stop shootings. Right. It's, it's incredible. We had a 17-year-old go to one of those crack hotels. I mean, that place has been a nuisance my whole life, you know, and, and shot a 48-year-old. And, yeah, and really. you know, then we got these judges who we, we need to get rid of all the judges in this town, like, Maybe some of them are good, but like, but the majority, like when you have somebody out on bond, when you get somebody out a murder charge and they get a bond, let me tell you, man, we got some fucking problems. We need to have more stiffer penalties. And if you have a murder charge or like anything, even like close, like any sort of felony charge, you should not get any bond. No, it should be, it should be base million dollar bond. Yeah, even 10% of that, good luck coming up with it. Take it I mean, out. You know, I, I know somebody who got out of bond on a murder charge for, I'm told, 12, well, his, his, bond, his bond was $12,000. He got out for $1,200. Bucks. $1,200, bucks, yeah. 10% gets you out. Who can't come up with $1,200? Yeah. Get out of damn prison. <laughs> and especially if it's a murder that was drug related. I mean, in reality, drug dealers have a lot of money. They just do. So to them, if that's a top earner, okay, here's twelve hundred dollars. You're going to make me back. You're going to make that back for me day one, and make me money between now and your trial. The other thing that I'm seeing is there aren't a lot of resources for recovery, right? So the reason we have a lot of substance abuse issues and things like that is because there aren't a lot of community outreaches that I've found, that I've seen, that I've seen advertised or anything else that are like, hey, come in and get help to get clean. You know, because that's the other side of it. If you screw with demand, the supply will dry up eventually. It will always be there, but there will be less of it. And it just makes the community look better, you know, because it makes it look like they're proactive, not reactive. I know a lot of drug addicts, man. I mean, the only way to get a drug addict clean is if they want to get clean. I mean, yep, I've seen it my whole life. You know. But you push him, you push him, listen, you're either getting clean or it's prison. That's a good yeah. motivator. I don't care. It's true. I guess you have to care. You're right. I know a lot of junkies too, but I I do know some that got clean and stayed clean. So I know that it is possible, but it was possible because they got into a lot of trouble and it was, listen, 15 years in prison or you're going to rehab for a year. And then you're going to be on probation for five years. If we catch you with anything, hey, guess what? That prison sentence is still there. You, you know, so 
part of the problem in Albany that I've come to that I, I learned about a few years ago. Like, so we have a certain hotels here, like the one, like some of the ones on Slappy and mm -hmm. like some of these longer stay travel lodges. And so, like, when you go to jail, you get out of jail, they give you the, I guess, the jail or something like the prison or whatever. Like, you, you obviously, you, you're a felon or whatever, right? You know, you have a pretty bad rap sheet, so it's going to be hard mm -hmm. to get a job. So, when you get out, they give you 60 days free at a hotel and they give you this list. And there, there are some of the hotels in our area that are on that list. So you get you go stay in one of these hotels for sixty or ninety days, something like that, right? And obviously, sixty ninety days, you know, you're a criminal. You know, you're, you're probably unless you're super motivated, you're not going to be able to get a job. You know, and you're not going to get back on your feet. And so once they, you know, once the sixty ninety days are up, they're either out dealing these drugs to pay for another hotel or something like that or you know they, they, they that's why our growing homeless population so you know we have a lot of the homeless people here because of that specific reason i mean we have a huge homeless population and, and i'm i really feel, feel that that along with our drug addiction are, are part of the reason as to why is because we allow our city allows those hotels to be on that registered list for criminals mm -hmm. so and really, if they're if they're paying for that they could in theory pay for a place for them, for these people to stay where they are monitored, where they have systems, you know what I mean? Where on site, there is somebody to help you with your resume. There is somebody who has connections to work, to job opportunities that do work with felons. So they're being, they're not just kicking you out on your own and going, hey, good luck to you. Listen, it didn't work the first time. That's why they sold the drugs to feed them, to feed their family, whatever the case may be, to get into the situation they're in. You, they need to have the resources in place and not just sit there to their own vices and go, well, this was the way it was done before. I didn't really get that bad of a charge. I'm going to do it again. If you have somebody take you by the hand and go, we're watching you 24-7. You will be here at this time, be back at this time. And we're going to help you get a job to earn an income. Because there are places that hire felons. Oh, I know some felons that have pretty good jobs. Well, I mean, like and, and a lot of people, a lot of people who get out of jail do get on the right path. I mean, I got a buddy of mine who uh, he did, I think, six, seven years in federal prison. And uh, I mean, you know, he was a pretty wild guy back in the day. But I mean, you know, now he's straightened his life up. I mean, and, mm -hmm. and let me tell you, man, he was never, in my opinion, a bad. I mean, he made some bad choices, obviously, but he was never like a bad choices. Yeah, he was never like a malicious criminal. He just, you know, did a few, did a few illegal things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, you know, me and him were friends the whole time in, in communication. He could email from the prison. They got this like little system. He could make phone calls and stuff. But so prison, I mean, a lot of people do get rehabilitated. Not all of them don't. It's just a tough cycle to be in, you know. It but is. for for a lot of the people who get out of jail, you you want to know where they should really go. It has great resources. There are two places. You know where those two places are? Washington, okay. D.C. and California. <laughs> uh, are you saying we should maybe, I'm not even going to go down that road. I'm not even going to go down that road. I was going to say something. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> but in all honesty, if the city is paying these hotels, because they are, these hotels are doing this stuff for free, right? Nobody who runs a business does anything for free. If they're wasting money on, on these sources that don't work and actually create more problems for the community, why? Invest in something that invest in something new. Like, I'm not saying it'll work, but if you keep doing the same thing and expect a different result, you're batshit crazy. Right? I mean, I mean yeah. You know, what we need in this town are more recreational activities. Like, I would love to see a, a water park. I think a water park would be a game changer for this town. A trampoline park. I think a trampoline park would be a, an amazing place. So, like, uh, we got this piece of land that my buddy owns right there on the corner of Jefferson and Palima. Mm -hmm. I think, man, so that's like 20 acres, something like that, right? I'm trying I to mean, my house. 
Yeah, so you have all so you have the expressway right there. You can get to and from the interstate. I have always thought that would be a fantastic spot to put a water park, man. Oh yeah. A water yeah, park would be incredible, man. 20 acres for a water park is that's a big water park. Like Thunder, what is it? I think Thunder Bay in Phoenix, which is owned by Six Flags. So, I can't remember the name of it, something like that. They only have like eight acres but they have so many water slides that it takes you all day to ride all of them i mean well we, we could do bouncy other things house. Yeah, a bouncy we, house park for kids trampoline park man a trampoline park i think so i got this plate this building on slappy for sale man it's like mm -hmm. a big warehouse man i've tried to put i tried to get trampoline parks to go in there man i think dude a trampoline park is something people of all ages love like Kids would love trampoline parks. I would love trampoline parks. Everybody loves trampoline parks. And you want to know something about a business like that? That is recession proof. Because no matter what the economy is, recession, no recession, whatever's going on, people are never going to skimp financially on their children's wants and needs. Nope. And for something, for like a warehouse, it's got tall enough walls. You can do, I've had, I've seen rock wall parks, the interior, oh. the interior. Rock climbing park, trampoline. That way you have something for, I mean, there are no adult arcades here. There isn't a single adult, uh, there is no place where I can go play NBA Jam on an arcade system with a beer, which blows my mind. As the ninth largest city in Georgia, that absolutely is mind blowing to me because I've seen those things in other cities and it's just printing money. You got booze, you got video games. Who doesn't love that? That's a great what company. Are, what are those, uh, what are those places? Was what's the golf place called? Uh, um, uh, the American Family Fun Park or whatever it is. No, now. no, no, no. Like you can go to oh, the golf, top golf? Place. top golf, man. Yeah, like, like something like a top golf, like a knockoff top golf, man. That would be banging, man. Absolutely banging. Man. But again, <laughs> nobody invests in. It. I mean, there's just there's no there's not as much growth as there should be. There is so much potential here. And I, I really think talking to other people, especially on the West Coast, they're starting to look at the Southeast as a place to invest because they've made so much money out West and the dollar there doesn't go as far as the dollar here goes. So they're looking at those types of things going, hmm, what can I do? You make a hundred grand and you live in Albany. Let me tell you, man, you live like a rock star. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can afford just about any house, probably. You know, you oh. can do just, you can travel a lot. You know, you can have a very comfortable, cushy life on a hundred grand here or less, really. 70, 60, 70 grand, really. Oh, yeah. I mean, 50 grand, really. You know, but I, I mean, if you go to, LA or Miami or Atlanta and you make a hundred grand a year, bro, you live in a box on the road. The yeah. homeless people make a hundred grand collect them change off the streets. Your your average home price in Phoenix right now is over four hundred thousand dollars. That is insane. And I mean LA area, I talked to somebody who sold a one bedroom, one bathroom house just outside of LA. One point one million because it was on three quarters of an acre and the people wanted the land three quarters of an acre and they had the balls the unmitigated gall to call that property i'm like that's not even a yard like <laughs> well time out time out here like what are you kidding me <laughs> well here you go my house is three bedrooms, it's 1,800 square foot, something like that. And it sits on uh, 0.36 acres. And for the, for the small price of a million two, I'll give it to you today. Right? Hey man, I got a 2,000 square foot house on an acre that I easily, you walk up, you walk up with $900,000. I'll make you a deal, 800 grand. I'll knock 200, I'll knock 200 and some odd thousand dollars off this thing. Eight hundred thousand dollars. It's yours for the low, low price. Eight hundred thousand. But it, we're back. We're back to a. We're back to appraised values and everything else, right? It's just it yeah. comes full circle. The more 
the more the house sells for next to you, the more your house is worth. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. I think we have a lot of growth here. I think we have a lot of good opportunities here for sure. And there are some passionate people in the community that are that are starting to push harder for the growth. You know what I mean? How how do you think the ACU meeting went that night? I think it went well. I really I think that if they can get I think that they need some people on their side to get some money behind them. But I think that that is the one thing that they really need because part of what they're trying to do is creating change themselves and not even asking the city or the councils or anything anymore just creating their own hey this is we have the money to do this we're creating our own resources now so some grants wherever the money comes from because say what you will about the federal government man they got a lot of money to blow on nonsense and you might as well get some of it for your town you know <laughs> and if they don't have it they'll just go print some more <laughs> yeah well, they just go over to old J-Pile and go, hey, we know inflation's terrible, but can you just print us a few more dollars? And he goes, yeah, inflation's yeah. insane, but here's a billion more dollar bills for you. I wonder why inflation's out of control. It's insane. It's great man. to be in charge of, it's great that your job, it's like uh, Matt Damon in The Departed, right? His job was to find the rat and he was the rat. When you're the problem and you're the solution to the problem, it's the best job to have because you'll always have a job because you can just create the problems you have to solve it's That's amazing right. That's right. i think i'm more just jealous you know at the end of the day if i look at it i'm just jealous that they get paid to solve their own problems that's genius level i mean you look at the amount of money that some of these senators have made like you take well i'm not going to call his name out but you take the former president right um not Donald Trump, a, a different one. Went into the presidency. I, I believe he was he was like in monstrous amount of debt. And today, let's see what he's worth. I mean, he, I mean, he Wait, was. You don't take a job that when you check in, even if you do a four year stint, that job ages you so bad. Look at every president from the time they went in to the time they came out. Except 70, for 70 million dollars. <laughs> it's not, it, it, hey, listen, in this country, since day one, it's not about what you know. It's always been about who you know, right? And when you're president, you get to know pretty much everybody. That's a prior, prior to being a president, he was worth five million dollars. After presidency, 70 million dollars. <laughs> That's and you want to talk about we don't have a corrupt government? <laughs> and what was it? Well, I mean, how much do they make? Like a the president makes like a hundred and forty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's been that again. It's been that way since day one. Four hundred grand, four hundred thousand a year. So you take that times eight. You know. <laughs> that's about 70 million. That ain't 70. No, we're not hitting 70 million dollars there. I mean, and, so. But everybody is, and this is this is how the country works, right? And you can go back through history. This we all turn a blind eye to things until it becomes such a, a severe problem, we just can't anymore. And then we deal with it, and then we go, hey, we fixed it. And then we just walk. It's it's like going in the house and you fix the, you fix one issue, you know, you fix a garbage disposal. And you go, hey, I don't have to do anything with the house anymore. You never put a new roof on it, you know. And then all of a sudden one day you have leaks in your roof and you have all these things and you're mad at everybody else going, well, how did all this happen? Well, you turned the blind eye to everything and you let it get out of control. It's in the 30s. If you look back to like the 20, the 1920s and 30s and you just copy and paste it to now. It's like, son of a bitch, we don't have any new ideas. We just keep repeating the same thing over and over. So if you look at the 20s, hey, everything's good. Everything's set. Okay, maybe it's not so good. The first two years were great, but oh, crap. And then the 30s hit, it's like, whoops, we, we lost her for a little while. There's our recession or depression. Oh, the D word. I'm not even going to bring up the D word. We're not going to jinx anything with the D word. We'll just, we'll just stay with the hard R. 
the uh, market, man, the market is up huge today already. I mean, it's it's only open ten minutes, man. Oh, I know. If you're if you're a short term investor, and you invested last week, you made some money this week, and you probably want to sell before old J-Pow comes out with the new information because it's going to look like like a crypto chart. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, if you look at my 401k, I lost 20% <laughs> or something like that. I don't really know. I don't even look at it because it hurts my feelings. Like, I don't look at my 401k or anything like that. <laughs> oh. Did you see the California DMV got into the blockchain industry now? So they were using technology like crypto to do all of their paper transfers and stuff to do instant title transfers. So can you imagine going paying cash for a vehicle and not having to wait for registration, all that stuff, all the paperwork to clear? Boom, done. Have Boom. you ever seen have you ever seen a house close in crypto? I've not. I would love to. I've seen I've talked to uh, some other agents uh, who have seen like up in the Atlanta and out, mm -hmm. out west, and they've seen a lot of people make a lot of money in crypto. And and they they've seen, you know, like they've actually seen a closing done via crypto. Which is just insane. Hey, let me tell you this crazy story, man. This lady, I, I feel so bad for her. She's getting duped. Um, so she she's got the, she she lives in this area, and I met her. I met her through a friend, right? So she uh, met this guy online on like Match.com, some website. I, I don't really know what website. Probably not Match, right? But some website. Mm -hmm. So this guy worked for the like. U.S. government or like the FBI, the Secret Service, some, some, you know, CIA, government, CIA. CIA you know, something like that, right? And, and so he was uh, always in Washington, you know, like on business, and mm -hmm. they were always communicating via the internet, right? And so uh, he had to go to, I think, like Costa Rica or some other country, like there was an island. Maybe what goes to read. I can't remember what it was. It was a couple months ago when I was told the story. But so he didn't have access to any of his money because he was in another country and he ran out of what he took to spend. Right. So he sent her a check for 20 grand and then she sent him 20 grand in Bitcoin. <laughs> She took the check to the bank to cash it in it bounced. Like, oh man, I, I feel so sorry for her, for her man. Yeah, you you that cannot the meet these people on the internet. If you meet somebody on the internet and they ask you for money or they tell you they got all this money or, or they tell you they need anything, you better meet these people in real life. Like, oh, yeah. you, you better date these people like in real life. Y'all better like hang out a lot. Like, y'all better travel to see each other like once a week or something. Before you start transferring reputable, twenty grand to them, reputable sources. I my grandparents have a neighbor, and she was going to sell her house. Right, six months. This fiasco lasted. The first deal fell through because the house didn't appraise correctly. So the realtor and the lender involved said, "Don't worry, we have an appraiser that will make this work." Now, how many red flags does that bring up for you right there? Because when I heard that phrase, I almost had a heart attack. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Do you know how many laws they just broke? Like, <laughs> they just broke all of the laws within five seconds. So it turns out the husband wound up getting charged with domestic violence. The deal fell through. And rather than the person who was selling the house seek legal action, the realtor just gave her five grand out of his own pocket. I went, that is the shadiest nonsense I have ever heard. Like, are you kidding me? I was like, you should, none of that should have happened. I was like, good Lord. Uh, we, ha we, have, we have an appraiser that'll appraise it for the right value. It's something that was like a 2007 statement. <laughs> That's a 2006, 2007 statement that is now highly, highly, highly illegal. Like all three, the appraiser, the loan originator, and the realtor should all be in at least other licenses revoked, but they don't. They just paid her off, and she's like, "Well, I got five grand. I'll sell it to somebody else." And she's still using the same realtor. Mm. So mm -hmm. a couple months ago, a friend of mine came to me and said, "Hey, my um, friend or my relative or something or other has this house they want to sell." 
And um, I was like, yeah, I'd love to help them, you know, whatever. But the people, you know, I didn't get their information. They never reached out to me. Nothing ever happened, right? Mm -hmm. So about three, four, five, six months goes along. Now, take mind, this was a couple months ago when the market was still really on fire. Right? Mm -hmm. So they were working with this other agent who shall remain nameless. And this agent was going to get them this great deal. And the house never got put on the market, never had anything happen, never had an offer, never had nothing happen. Right. So finally, they, they decided to call a realtor like myself, who got a great reputation. Once again, we go back to the reputation of somebody mm -hmm. who knows what the hell they're going, what the hell's going on in life. The people call me, I list the house, put it on the market, 40, less than 48 hours on the market. We got it under contract over ask. Reputation, everybody. Reputation. You got to know you who got, the fuck you're dealing with. You got to know. And listen, you want the person, you don't want the person who panics over every little hiccup, bump in the road and all that. You want the person who sees the hiccup and laughs and goes, all right, fine, I'll fix it. You know, I, it's, that's who you're really, and if you're, if you're a, a first time home buyer, let's just, let's get this out of the way right now. You cannot pick your own appraiser. The lenders can't pick your appraiser. The realtor cannot pick your appraiser. So the appraiser is a random draw, random assigned thing. Okay. So it's not like any of us have control over it. None of us do, which is the fairest way to do it, to leave it up to random chance. At the end of the day, random chance is the fairest thing in the world because it's random chance. Whatever you get, you get. So don't think when you go into buying a house that you're going to have, because when I went into buying my first house, the appraisal took a little longer than I thought it should. And I didn't know at the time that I couldn't pick my own. So I was pushing realtors and everybody else to pick it. And that's how I learned, hey, we can't. So keep that in mind. If you're dealing with reputable people, reputable loan originators, reputable realtors, we have no control over the appraisal process. For good reason, the story I just told where mm, they may have been manipulating some prices on some houses, we can't have that anymore. That That's kind of one of the things that happened to cause 2008 and all that stuff they were overvaluing homes a little bit and working we were all working together a little too close so they put us in separate corners of the classroom just like kids who talk too much they went uh -uh, can't do that anymore so know that going in it makes it a lot easier when you go in with that knowledge knowing hey this is random chance everything else i've locked in i've made the right call with my realtor i've made the right call with my lender i chose burton i chose chad I've made the right decisions with those people. I'll trust that team to deal with whatever nonsense comes out of the appraisal. 99% of them go smooth as silk. But that 1% that don't, scar people like Burton and I, guys, hard. So we, we always count on that 1% chance because that 1% chance burns into our brain. And we're waiting for it. We're ready for it. When it happens, we know the solutions because we've been down those roads before. Don't worry if you've picked the right team. That one random element is going to be what it is, and we'll deal with it. But you have no control, and neither do we. Well, it's a good thing that we've solved all the world's problems, man. We ready to go and wrap this one up? Yeah, I mean, we tried to. We said we were going to try to keep them at twenty minutes, and we're at an hour. Well, <laughs> yeah. well we, I mean, it takes it takes an hour to solve the world's problems for us. You know, we we can't do everything real fast. It did take us an hour, but we got the world back under control. Yep. We got everything solved and on the right path. And uh, now, now everything's going to move like smoothly. And we got some breakfast in our bellies from Pearly. So we got the energy for the day to go out and kick some tail. I know you got a few things that you got to do with today. So you couldn't have a beer with breakfast. It's my day off. So I was planning on to to talking about that too. But hey, man, you know, some people got to do stuff throughout the day, I guess. That's right. I got to mow my lawn. I'm hoping that the fog lifts enough and the grass dries out because my lawn's getting a little shaggy. I hear you, man. Well, I I'll catch you on the next one. I'll see you later, man. Have a good Sounds one, Chad. Good, boss. We'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Later. Well, what a great episode we had. I think this was our best one yet, and we can't wait to see y'all on the next one. Y'all tune in next week.